All right. Welcome to the bench. Today, we're going to be tying this golden stone. It's just a really good golden stone pattern. Um, <clears throat> we are tying it on a Umpqua X-Series Purdy Jig size 12. We're using a 4 millimeter bead in uh, nickel. And for the legs, we're using these kind of legs here. I forget what brand they are. I think they're Montana Fly Company. Uh, critter legs or something like that. For the dubbing, we're going to be using Spirit River Dazzle Hairs Mask. And then for the thorax material and the top material, we're using Thin Skin. And uh, Modded Bustard. All right. And then for the thread, I'm using UTC 70 in yellow olive. And for the rib material, I'm using UTC gold small. All right, let's get a new fresh hook in this vise and get this tie going. Being that it's close to March here, almost March, Getting stoneflies going is going to be a thing pretty soon, so I figured we might as well get them tied up. I think on the Arkansas River right now, they're already hitting this, them pretty good from what I hear. All right, so we're going to start off with a thread wrap, a small thread wrap behind the bead. Uh, you don't need to put any weight on this fly with a four millimeter bead. It's pretty, pretty heavy as is, but... I just like to secure my bead with just a little bit of lead. Uh, you can also just do a thread dam behind the bead. Um, I think with the uh, extra legs this fly has, that creates a lot of drag in the water. So I like just a little bit more weight to kind of offset that. So this baby will get down and get down fast, especially where you're going to be fishing it. It's going to be pocket waters, you know, mostly. So you're going to be wanting this thing to get down and get down quick. All right, so I take my leg material, which I have cut down. No, well, here, I'll just do it. So just rip one leg out, one leg off the thing there. Now you're going to just take your strip, fold it in half, and then just cut it right where it, in the middle. And each half is good for one fly. So then cut off a little piece about an inch and a half, two inches. And that's where our starter piece is going to be here for our tail slash legs. So how I like to secure these on is I get them, I get it where I like that, you know, right about in the middle between. And then I kind of pull it up against that lead dam, keeping everything on top. And then I fold it over and I pull it. And what that helps do is not create a little void or a bump right there. It just helps to keep the fly's profile a little nicer. This is getting dubbed, so it's not that big of a deal to have a nicer profile on it, but I still like to have profile, nice profile underneath my dubbing. All right, and we're gonna to wanna to go to right about where the hook barb would, would be starting, you know, if this was barbed up, or just about to where the hook bend starts to bend. All right, so then I've got my little piece of gold wire I like to tie it right up to where the, the lead starts. Again, I'm trying to help that bump out. And I'm going to do loose wraps. Get your lead, get your wire where you want it. Okay, now we're going to just kind of secure that down here. While we build a little bit of a taper in this fly.
nothing too crazy. We don't want it to be too much of a taper. Not like a carrot or anything, just kind of nice, smooth. We don't want to build too much where this lead is either, because then you'll end up having bad finishing knots. All right, so now that we're right here, I'm going to turn the fly up there. I'm going to readjust our legs where we want them to sit, because this is actually the way the fly is going to be riding in the water. <clears throat> All right, so I'm using just a about an eighth inch thick strip of the thin skin. And then with the thin skin, there's a shiny side and a dull side. You want to tie it in to where the dull side is up so that when you fold it back on itself, it will be shiny. And I like to just take my end here and just cut the corners a little bit so it is easier to grab on with the thread. Something like that. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of push the thin skin up against the, the body and then just give it a nice kind of loose but firm loop and just pull it where you want it and then secure it down. Now, I like to put some tension on it and pulling as best as I can straight back. I know the hook of the barb is in the way, but do the best you can. It's not gonna matter too terribly if it's off just a little bit from center. Okay, and I like to just wrap all those up, make sure everyone's happy. Secure, all right. So now we're gonna hit, I like my Loon High Tack Wax. For this, well, I really like the Loon High Tack Wax for pretty much most flies, most dubbing. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so we're gonna throw a fairly thick noodle of this Spirit River Dazzle on there. And I don't know, this Dazzle, uh, this packet came with the, has all these little white fuzzes in it. And I just get those out of there because they just make it a pain in the butt. All right, so we want to do some nice light noodle here to start. Get some layers built on this thing. I'm just going to kind of come back and just do another little round of layers. Be a fairly bushy body to start here. Just kind of fill in any of the thin spots that you have. Get it to where you like it. You just want to make sure you have a nice even noodle. Okay. I'm going to set this excess aside here. But we're going to need it, so I do one wrap try and do one wrap and then come over the top of it as kind of a security wrap on the end there and if you need to build taper just overlap yourself okay i'm going to need to add a little more now you don't have to dub all the way to the bead at this point if you don't want to but i I like it because I feel like the dubbing helps keep the legs pushed out so they're not just riding tight up against it. A little more leggy action, if you will. And this you want to go less is more kind of thing because you can always add. It's a lot harder to take the dubbing off the thread once you've gotten it on there. So we just want to kind of yeah, build that taper consistently. Up. All right, with this type of fly, I mean, I would really rather just go on air on the side of caution when it comes to dubbing noodles. Just, I'd rather have to add than take a bunch off, mess up the fly. All right, now, maybe just a touch more up against that bead. You don't want it too much. You still want to be able to leave some room for tying in uh, your whip finish at the end, but you don't want to leave a gap there because we kind of want all this thread is hidden as best as we can. So I'm 
Okay, now we're here. We're gonna flip our fly around. Now if you want, you can actually take your dubbing brush. You have one that can fit in there and just kind of brush these longer fibers down a little bit, just a little bit. All right, so then we're gonna take our thin skin, holding here. We're gonna go the opposite direction. So we're going this way, we wanna come back around this way. Now, we gotta hold our thin skin with one hand. It's kind of a, kind of a pat your head and rub your stomach kind of situation. You gotta be all fingers here. This fly, I'm going for three wraps. You kind of want to adjust that thin skin as you go. Okay, and so what I did is on that third wrap, I brought that that wrap more perpendicular or more like a 90 degree instead of coming at the angle instead of coming in at the angle that the wrap was going I've ended up bringing it straight across that way we can fold this back and our thin skin will end up having a straight line instead of a angled one it's just personal preference and I captured that little piece of wire now we're just gonna 90 it back on itself and twist it right off okay now more dubbing we're going to try and kind of build up just a little bit of a where the thorax is going to be in the wing case so it kind of bumps out just a little bit not too much i mean we don't want it to be like a giant humpback type situation just enough that it's kind of obvious that it's a thorax this is a real short like shanked fly so there's not a lot of room for detail and the way that this looks and fishes and water doesn't need a lot of detail <clears throat> but what really is the kicker on a fly like this is that contrast between the bottom of the so this dark strip and this bottom and you have a nice parallel line and a difference between light and dark on that bottom if you look at the way that almost all stone flies are um their, their, you know, how their bodies look in the water. There's a whole bunch of videos online showing how they uh, act and swim and everything else, their whole life, the entomology of it. And it'll show you like a pretty, pretty apparent how their dark light, dark light when they're spinning in the water. And most, most invertebrate bugs I feel like are, are that way. They're their top side or their back side is going to be darker, more camo, and their underside is a little more bright. So they kind of stick out a little bit more. And I think that that's really the key is getting some, some contrast going when they're keyed on to these bigger bugs. And uh, you'll end up having a very successful fishing. So, and tying flies, like, you know, a lot of flies are made to sell <laughs> they're not made to really catch fish necessarily i mean they are obviously or we wouldn't use them but you know a lot of flies are you know set up to look really good to us but well how we look at the flies and how the fish look at the flies are totally different and so if you actually look at most bugs in the water you know they're very they're very dull and they're very bland and they don't have a whole lot of things going on but the main thing you're going to have in most bugs in the water is they're going to have very pronounced segmentation and they're going to have pronounced dif the coloration differences from top to bottom especially the crawlers <clears throat> so then i put a little more dubbing on I'm going to try, I'm going to bring him around and behind these legs to try and help kick those out. And if you like where you got it, then go with it. Okay. Now I'm going to go over the top of that. Build that and then one behind. And I'm just going to keep going over here. 
just like that. Okay, now we're just gonna snip those guys, get those adjusted. We're gonna cut all the legs to length at the end, so don't worry about that right now. And actually, if you have these front legs a little bit longer, it makes it a little easier to tie it in. All right, so now we're just gonna, same thing when we were wrapping. Now this time, I'm gonna take this hand, I'm gonna come around the bobbin, and I'm gonna grab it, so I can grip with this hand, and then I'm gonna kind of, as I pull down, kind of loosen my grip over on this guy, and I'm gonna let it go, and just kind of work it down. We want it to kind of pinch it. One, two over the top, one over the back, and then one over the top again. And then I'm gonna just pull up slightly, not too hard, and just cut. Okay, now I'm gonna do just another small noodle of dubbing. Just to kind of help hide our thread a little bit on that last wrap. Also give this the appearance of some gills. I'm gonna hold those back, pinch them. Now, you can kind of just give yourself just a little more room for the tie-in, for the whip finish. Okay, now, I'm going to grab everything like that as I bring my whip finish tool up. I'm going to go four or five turns, get that nice and tight, and then one more four or five turn whip finish. Okay, now we're gonna wanna get our legs all pulled forward and then pinch them together, kind of bring them all together into a nice little bundle there. And we're just gonna nip off. So I already have my length kind of figured out, but. <clears throat> I just like to pull everything forward and get it to where it's about uh, close to a quarter inch past the bead. And then you have get your consistency down so that your all your flies are going to end up roughly the same. And it's important to tie all your flies exactly the same every pa every time for that pattern because the that fly is going to fish a certain way. Um, compared to a fly that might be tied with like a little less weight or slightly different legs going on, something like that. Get those even. I like them here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we've got all our legs adjusted. Now I'm gonna whack it with the little head cement here. This is the Loon water base. Sometimes I've noticed like the scud back and the thin skin will react poorly with certain head cement and resins. So gotta be just kinda diligent about noticing if your legs start popping off or your thin skin breaks or it gets super dull then uh, you might want to check out some different uh, head cement there you go there you go this is a great fly tie some up obviously any legs bead thin skin you know everything can be modified to suit whatever this is just a great pattern do it in gray, do it in green, do it in black, do it in red. You can do it in whatever color you want, and it'll fish amazing for you. So give some a shot. But this one here is particularly an awesome golden stone pattern. So thanks for watching, and have fun fishing.